to be home. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rory McKernan. We are live from Aromas, California, where it all began. And this is the announcement of 16.5, brought to you by Progenix. Tonight, the 2016 Open rounds the final turn from a center of excellence to a two-car garage, from the next generation to the old guard, to a salute for our men and women in uniform. As a community, we celebrate the biggest and best Open ever. Barriers have been shattered, new PRs achieved, and for the finale, the CrossFit Games are coming home. The Ranch in Aromas, birthplace of the CrossFit Games, hosts a legendary matchup. Rich Froning. Rich Froning is the fittest man in history. Matt Fraser. Strap yourselves in for an exciting final day as Fraser takes the event. Ben Smith. Ben Smith is the fittest man on earth. The last time all three met in competition was 2014. Now Smith and Fraser get one more shot to beat Froning head to head. This will only happen once. Three legends in the sport of fitness. One final workout on hallowed ground. 16.5 is next. That's right, the end of the Open is in sight, and nowhere in the world will you find three better examples than the athletes competing here tonight of how to finish strong. In two showings at the CrossFit Games, he has finished second place. He won last year's World Wide Open. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Fraser. The only one of these three athletes who competed here in Aromas. Six years later, he is your defending fittest man on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Smith. Currently the captain of the fittest team on earth and a four-time CrossFit Games champion. Give it up for Rich Froning Jr. For the final announcement of the 2016 Open, ladies and gentlemen, the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Commence the Open we did with this movement. Conclude the open we will with this movement. 16.5 is 14.5. 21 thrusters, 21 bar facing burpees. 18 thrusters, 18 bar facing burpees. 15 thrusters, 15 bar facing burpees. 12 thrusters, 12 bar facing burpees. 9 thrusters, 9 bar facing burpees. 6 thrusters, 6 bar facing burpees. 3 thrusters, 3 bar facing burpees. Four time. Conclude your open you will with beautiful pain. Every repetition of the thruster must have the athlete pass below parallel where the hip crease is clearly below the top of the knee and finish with the athlete fully locked out overhead with the arms, hips, and legs extended and the bar over the center of the athlete's body when viewed from profile. Each repetition of the burpee starts with the athlete touching their chest and thighs to the ground and jumping over the barbell. A two-foot takeoff is required. We will be performing a task priority workout. That means the athlete will finish the work as quickly as possible and their time will be their final score. There is no time cap for this workout. There is no time cap. You will finish this workout, my friends. Now, if anybody hates bar facing burpees, you know it's this guy right here. So before you start complaining, just think, if you were in the open last year, you didn't do one single burpee. So give a little bit, get a little bit, no big deal. Now we always wanna hear from you guys. You can tweet along with the show, use the hashtag and the handle CrossFit Games and we'll try and get you into the show or maybe answer your questions on the cool down show. Now a lot of the people here were involved in the history of the CrossFit Games. Some of you at home as well probably, or maybe it's your first exposure to this little ranch in Aromas. 
Either way, it's crazy to think that with 320,000 people in the open and the massive reach that we have worldwide, this whole thing started with a gathering of friends not much bigger than what you see here. Aromas, California. Population 2,600. This four and a half square mile patch of Northern California land is easy to overlook. But to the international community of CrossFit, a small ranch nearby is a monument to a global movement. This is the site of the first ever CrossFit Games. In early 2007, myself and Greg Glassman were walking here at the ranch. He was looking around and he says, wouldn't it be cool to run an event here, to have some sort of get together of, of CrossFitters? He had this idea, he had this vision of, of bringing everyone together like the Woodstock of fitness. And he's like, well, I want people coming from all across the world to come and hang out, drink beer, work out, and at the end of the weekend, we'll crown the fittest man alive. The first year was an informal gathering, more like a barbecue than a sporting event. That first year, I don't think anybody had quite the sense of what it was going to be yet. The next two years brought massive strides in the level of competition and a rapid expansion to the fan base. The Woodstock of fitness exploded. In the seven years since moving to Los Angeles, the CrossFit Games have blossomed into an international sporting phenomenon. The spectacle is witnessed around the globe and its influence on training has changed the fitness world forever. And it all started when a seed was planted on a small ranch in Aromas with a simple question. Who is the fittest? I'm now joined on the floor by the founder and CEO of CrossFit, Greg Glassman and Dave Castro. Dave, so much to love about tonight. What, what really stands out for you? Well, it's a special event because this is the 10-year anniversary of the CrossFit Games, and here we are on the floor for where we did the first ever CrossFit Games workout. So that's special. This is where I grew up. Right now, I just keep looking down the street, hoping the uh, cops or the fire department doesn't show up and <laughs> cancel the show. But if they come, I figure we'll, uh, we'll just keep doing this, and we'll have some people block them and hold it up. You probably know them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach. 10 years, man. So back then, what was the state of CrossFit when this whole thing kicked off in 2007? Yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. I miss your mom, Dave. It's, um, it's been amazing. I don't know if we're growing or breeding. Look at all the young faces. This is, this is special. So 10 years have passed. What, what are you most proud of when you think about what this community has accomplished in a decade? It's just the community itself, the people here. I mean, look at us. Yeah, there's not another group like this anywhere in the world except where the rest of the crowd's going Amen that. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Coach Glassman. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. We're just moments away from the action, so let's go check in with the men who will be calling it later on. Sean Woodland standing by with a very, very fit 46-year-old, Bill Grundler. Thanks, Bill. Well, we didn't think we were going to have to do a repeat. We're doing a repeat. Didn't think we'd have to do burpees again. We're doing burpees again. So what's the key here to 16.5? The key is going to be the same thing that's always key, especially when it comes to burpees and the thrusters. you got to pace yourself correctly. We have three guys that know how to pace themselves correctly, but that's what this is going to come down to. You mentioned the three athletes. All of them have championship aspirations this year, whether it be individual or team. And if there were a cross at Mount Rushmore, you would put these three guys on it. 14 combined individual games appearances between them. And when they get to Carson, they're extremely consistent. Who has the most gain who has the most to lose the one that's got the most to gain for me that I would say would be Matt Frazier twice coming in second he really wants to get rid of that number two on his back he needs to show everyone with these other two champions that he is the man to beat he's got the most to gain now who has the most to lose most to lose would have to be when you walk around with the title of fittest man in history mm -hmm. You have nowhere to go but down. So Rich needs to win to just kind of put a stamp on that. We know these three guys can do just about anything you throw at them. So let's break this down individual by individual, starting with Matt Fraser. He had the best time of these three in 14.5. What do you like about him going into this event? Well, and he actually cracked a little smile when they announced it too. So I think he was a little happy about that. But we know his Olympic prowess. He's strong there. But over the last couple of years, if you get a quick, ugly, painful workout, that's where he's going to do really well. The defending fittest man on earth is Ben Smith, and in 2014, had the third best time of these three. Yeah, but he's got the most experience, so he feels very comfortable. He's not a flashy athlete, but he can get in there and do exactly what he needs to do. You know, doesn't waste his energy here or there. He'll know what to do. He's got the experience to do really well here. And speaking of experience, Rich Froning, who has never 
lost in an open announcement. Yeah, that's kind of daunting going into the rest of the group if you have to face that. Rich Fronin, you know he's going to do well. You know that he knows how to pace. He attacks people, lets them get ahead, then starts picking them off one by one. He's just going to be fun to watch. He's going to be fun to watch. Before we found out the workout and you knew the athletes, you made a pick. Yeah. Are you going to change that? <laughs> Now that you know the workout. Yeah, I'm going to go with Matt Fraser okay. now. I like the workout for him, and I think he's got that grit, and he wants to prove some people wrong. All right, we're just a couple minutes away. We're going to send it back to Rory McKernan to get this thing kicked off from the ranch in Aromas, California. But before we do that, you're going to do this. Uh, what are you, how are you going to approach this? Because I know when you do it, it's going to look similar to what these guys are doing because you are currently number one in the world. I, I, I'd like to think that I'm similar, so thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but it's going to come down to pacing. I, I got to be you got to be smart in the beginning. You know, the 21 and the 18, once you get past that, you're basically at the halfway point. So be very smart about the first half so you have some gas for the last half because that's where you really need to bring it home. We'll get into some tips for the rest of us later on when Nicole Carroll will join us. But for the you for the rest of the community you're going to coach some athletes through this yep. what would you going to tell the guys at your gym uh break up your thrusters if you need to mm -hmm. uh because you, there's really no need to break up the burpees just go keep yourself moving they don't have to be fast just get yourself up get yourself over the bar conserve just a touch for those uh thrusters and if you need to break them up you can break them up then set break them up into sets of three or sets of four whatever mm -hmm. you need to do keep yourself moving you have not been to a games here but you've been to a lot of great events around the world what do you think of this the fact that we've made it this far, the fact that we started here and now we've come full circle back to here, I mean, that this is the mecca of CrossFit. This is the mecca of CrossFit. They still have the original hopper mm -hmm. inside the building there. So that, that if you're a CrossFit, a CrossFitter or a CrossFit athlete, this is where you need to come to. So I, I think it's amazing that we're here. I think it's a beautiful thing that we're here. Uh, it's fun. How's the Open been going for you so far? You're number one in the world. It's been going all right. Yeah. It's been going all right. We, my, me and my brother have been right. having You're some fun. In the world. We've been having some fun. So I, I you know, I, I like the open time um, for myself. It's, you know, it's that first step, and yeah. I always want to compete. That's that's what you do when you're an athlete. You just keep on competing. But I really love it for the community. We've had so many yeah. people get PRs and do things that they've never done yeah. before. This is what the open is all about. Yes, for the athletes, it's a first step, but everyone else, it's about doing things you've never done. Well, it's go time, and we've never had these three on this floor in this setting. Let's send it to Roy McKernan. The past, present, and future of CrossFit will now collide on the floor where the very first workout took place. For the countdown to 16.5, here's Dave Castro. 10 seconds. Three, two, one, go. We are underway at the ranch in Aromas, California. The only time you're going to see these guys going head to head this year and maybe ever as Ben Smith, Matt Fraser, and Rich Froning kick off 16.5. I'm actually really impressed with Ben Smith. Look how fast he's coming out of the gate. Now we all know, and we've talked about pacing is imperative, but he's really attacking. And I, I wouldn't normally consider him being an attacker of the workouts. He just kind of gets himself going. But wow, he is he's just in assault mode. The leader in the workout will have his name highlighted in blue, and the number of reps he has completed will be in that white box. The two men in red, the number of the white box will indicate how many reps they are behind the leader. And right now, Matt Fraser and Rich Froning are trading the lead, and Ben Smith is just about a half rep behind. So even here in the round of 21, right out of the gates. Watch Matt Fraser. Every rep he goes over the bar, he starts to slowly turn himself around. So he's cutting down that rep in half. Looks very relaxed. That's real important. This is not where the race is going to be won, that first set of 21. You just need to find yourself a tempo. 13 for Matt Fraser continues to work through his 21 burpees, as does Rich Froning. And Froning did this workout in 2014 in San Francisco at Keysar Pavilion, and he actually went up against a bunch of former champions, including women. And remember, when he went out in 2014, he was behind Sam Briggs, and he completed that first round in a minute, 49 seconds. And he does the almost wow. same thing here, about two seconds ahead of that pace. He knows his pace so well. He knows exactly how hard to push. And this is exactly what he did 
back in 2014. He lets the field get ahead, let them get comfortable, let them blow out a lot of energy, and then he slowly reels them in. After playing with some of his splits from that year, we found out that all of his reps, every single one, whether it was thrusters or burpees, was virtually the same from the start of the workout all the way to the end. Matt Fraser and Rich Froning are on the lead pace. Ben Smith has the bar down. He's the first man to break up his thrusters. Be sure to send in your tweets. We'll try to get him on the screen here as part of our live broadcast from the ranch in Aromas, California, 16.5. Ben Smith, Matt Fraser, and Rich Froning going head-to-head. -head. We're approaching the three-minute mark, and Matt Fraser now slightly ahead of Rich Froning, who's keeping that steady pace as he moves himself up and over that 95-pound bar. Watch Rich Froning. The last time he did this workout, both feet would come flying up, but you see him stepping up now. Really, really smart. What that does is it allows him to not have to pop his hips so much. He steps closer to the bar so he doesn't have to jump over as far. Very, very smart. And I'm surprised. I'm Not that I'm surprised that he isn't a smart athlete. Last time he didn't have to do that. Ben Smith is falling off the pace just slightly. Rich Froning about a rep or two behind Matt Fraser. Rich Froning in 2014 got done with his 18 rep round in 336. And once again, he is on that pace. Fraser is done with the round of 18. He'll be the first of the barbell on the left of your screen in the black shirt. 15 reps now at 95 pounds. Sean, just before the workout, just before these guys got on the floor, when, once they announced the workout, we saw Matt run over to Ben, uh, ben Bergeron and get a little bit of some helpful tips there. So I think that that turn on the burpee, you see him actually resting up top, stealing a little bit of Rich Roney's technique. I think that's really smart for Matt. Fraser starting to put some distance between himself and Froning and Ben Smith. Smith is now solidly in third and needs to play a little bit of catch up as now Fraser is on to his round of 15. And Phil mentioned Ben Bergeron. He is the coach of Catherine David's daughter, the man who brought her from missing the games to winning them in 2015. Not a bad coach to have in your corner. Now, one thing we haven't really talked about, and we don't really like to say things like this, you know, whether a workout is a big man's workout, a small man's workout, but this is a range of motion workout. You have that thruster, the distance that that bar has to travel, or how far do you have to go from laying on the ground to jumping over the bar? And the shortest athlete out there is Matt Frazier. So that means he has less distance to travel. So he actually does have the advantage. Right now, Fraser has a four rep advantage on Rich Froning, a seven rep lead on Ben Smith, and now one to go on his 15 burpees. And Fraser taking a break to strip off a shirt and move to the barbell for his 12 thrusters. Now, Matt Fraser, we've seen other athletes who go out this quickly. They're not Matt Fraser. If a guy can maintain this pace, it's him. The guy can take pain. He can put himself into that really dark place and just stay there knowing that he'll get to the end eventually. He right now is ahead of Rich's time from 2014. Now in that, that, in that year, Matt beat Rich by about 10 seconds. So he is on, he's on his own pace to do the same thing he did that year. And also that year when Rich Stroney did this workout live, he was chasing down Samantha Briggs and wound up passing her. Later on in this workout, around the round of nine, is when Rich Froning took the lead, and he's creeping up on Matt Fraser. He's got the barbell down. Fraser's working on his burpees, as is Rich Froning. Ben Smith, 12 reps back of the leader. The battle between these two men, Matt Fraser on the left, and Rich Froning on the right. You see that little sidestep with Rich Froning, trying to save a little bit of energy. Going to see if he can use that when we get down to the fast rounds of nine, six, and three, so he can play catch up. Fraser's done. He moves to nine, and if you watch him closely, he was taking a look over to his left to see what Froning was doing. And Matt Fraser's right back on the bar barbell as we're past six minutes, and Fraser is leaving both Smith and Froning well behind him. Rich Froning finishes 12 reps at 6:23, so he's behind that pace that he set a couple years ago. But Matt is just about 10 seconds ahead of that. So he is on pace for his time. And, you, you know, we talked about this earlier. He's got something to prove. He needs to show these guys what he's all about. He wants to show everyone that, you know what, that second place is not the first loser, as, you know, a lot of people say with that number two spot. I mean, he is the real deal.
Ritz Froning on the right of your screen trying to catch up with Matt Fraser, who set a frantic pace to start. He has pretty much kept that. He's almost through his round of nine. Ben Smith, 17 reps off the lead pace. And now Frazier with two barbells to go, six reps on this one. And Ritz Froning is still working on his burpee. So Matt Fraser is making a statement in Aromas. Almost seven and a half minutes gone here in 16.5. The first time these three men have ever been here competing at the ranch and possibly the last time we see them compete together as individuals. Throning, of course, in the team competition, Smith and Fraser are individual competitors. And Matt Fraser getting set to wrap up his six burpees and he is leaving Rich Throning and Ben Smith in his dust. And he is moving so fast. On to the final barbell. Three thrusters, three bar-facing burpees, and maybe one big win here at the famous ranch in Aromas, California. Three burpees remain for Matt Fraser, who does not have a championship, but right now, Fraser has bragging rights and a whole lot of confidence, Ooh. and that could be dangerous in July. Wow. He just did not stop at all. He's so good at just staying in that pain zone knowing that he can relax at the end, but doesn't stop, did not quit at all. Ben Smith is on his round of six. Rich Froning is on his round of three. Froning's gonna wrap up a second place finish. And the defending fittest man on earth, Ben Smith, will finish third. Froning is in. Does not beat his time that he set in 2014. Congratulates Matt Fraser. Now Ben Smith, the only one who needs to finish up. He moves to the final barbell. And Ben Smith is a little ahead of the pace that he had in 2014. You know, and, and, and even though he's taking third place here, when you get a better score than you had, you really can't be bummed out about that. An improvement is improvement. Great job for Ben Smith. Ben Smith in at 906.8 rich froning will finish in second place the first time that froning has not won an open announcement and matt fraser is the winner he came out early set the pace held the lead and then something that we don't see people do often when they're facing rich froning kept it and in, in, in this workout smashed people to the ground but look at him he's walking around no big deal let me get my glasses that's when you know your fitness is on point where did he make the difference here? So we talked about the burpees and how important they are. Rich started out doing that classic, both feet coming up. The idea there is you want to get your feet close to the bar. That's what Matt was doing. So he'd get close to the bar and actually start to turn in midair. I think that was really smart on his part. If you look at that range of motion, and you know, I don't want to make a big, too big of a deal about that, but Matt does have a shorter range of motion. He's shorter. So that's a lot less that he has to do, but he what, he just did not stop. There was no rest time as he transitioned from bar to bar. He would come right to the bar, grab it and go, and just did not stop. Absolutely relentless. Matt Fraser set a really impressive fast pace, and we've seen other people do that when they face Rich Froning, and then they crumble later on, and Froning reels him in with a slow and methodical attack on the workout. Matt Fraser, an impressive performance here as he takes 16.5 and Matt Fraser is standing by with Rory McKernan as we take a look at the final results. Matt, you came hot out of the gates. Was was there a plan or were you just trying to go? Uh, no, I was just trying to pace. I mean, the first set of thrusters, I got off a couple of reps behind them and just knew, all right, stick to your pace, stick to know what I can do. Did you remember this from last time? Do you remember what your time was? No, I had no idea what the time was. You definitely improved by, by about 10 or 12 seconds. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, uh, second place at the CrossFit Games is an amazing accolade, but watching the, the documentary Fittest on Earth, it's not something that you're happy with. You're ready to change that. What did you make changes with last year that are going to put you in first place? Um, you know, obviously I'm not happy with it. There's room to improve, so I'm just trying to improve and be more well-rounded. Uh, I neglected a lot of weightlifting last year worked on cardio so just kind of doing a more well-rounded program and see what happens so far so good congratulations matt ladies and gentlemen matt fraser
Fraser is your victor as he is the first man to beat Rich Froning in an open announcement, something that we have never seen before. And what impressed you the most about his performance here? I, you know, Matt is such a strong athlete, and the, the fact that he can hit that crazy switch is just so impressive. He doesn't look bothered while he's going through the workout. He doesn't look exhausted. He looks a little tired at the end, the second it's done, but then you see how fast he recovered. Super impressed, super impressed. Now, when the rest of us do it, I mean, you're an exception to this, you know, number one in the world, but when the rest of us do this, it's not going to look like that. So for some tips to, for us who are just trying to get the best score possible, here's Nicole Carroll. 16.5 looks a little familiar. 21, 18, 15, 12, 9, 6, and 3 thrusters and bar facing burpees. Some of you might remember this one from two years ago. You also probably remember the strategy is pretty straightforward and that's just to keep moving. Simple, but not exactly easy and there's definitely some things we can do to help ourselves out. First, don't sprint out of the gate on the thrusters. Find a smooth and steady pace. It might even feel slow, but that's okay. Let it be slow until you see the nines and the sixes in your sights, and then you can pick up speed if you've got it in you. Ideally, we wanna go unbroken on the thrusters. Dropping the bar, picking it up, re-racking it, all takes time and energy. But I get it, that's not realistic for everyone. So before going into this, Honestly, look at how heavy is this thruster for you? How will you need to break it up for best success? Create a game plan and stick to your plan. The burpees are a little different. They'll get slow, but you shouldn't have any reason to break them up. Instead, you wanna modulate your pace to get as much or as little active recovery as you need. This again will lend to the unbroken thrusters if you can do them. Let's get rid of wasted movement on the burpees like any extra little hops. Jumping back is okay if you've got it in you. If not, you can step back and step forward. And also remember, the standard only calls for a two-footed jump over the bar. You don't have to come to full extension at the top. If you're unfamiliar with doing your burpees this way, practice it a little bit ahead of time. They seem like small things, but over the course of 84 reps can make a big difference. Finally, you will be supremely gassed on this workout. It might go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Pay attention to your breathing and wherever you can, take in some big, deep breaths. This is the perfect end to the 2016 open season. Simple movements that we can all do. There's no reason for any of us not to give this one everything we've got. Go get them and good luck. You can find tons more from Nicole and lots and lots of educational material on CrossFit's Facebook page. Go check that out before you wrap up your open. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. In just a couple minutes, we'll have the cool down show presented by Arosti. All three athletes sitting down to answer some of your questions. And I'm sure Dave Castro is going to have one or two things to say as well. After that, Roe v. Boz, 16.5, right here in Aromas. I got something to prove, man. I got to break that broom, no sweep. And we got a special guest. The director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro, is taking the third lane. You're not going to want to miss it, right? Go to the Facebook page. Oh, down. what? You're what? Down. That's where you're going to find it. Guys, congratulations to all of you. It's been an amazing season, and you made it such. I'm really sad to say goodbye because this concludes our final broadcast, but it's really just the beginning. Regionals are around the corner. Tickets go on sale March 28th. That's this coming Monday. So snatch up your tickets because I want to see you at regionals. And until then, for one more week, if you scroll down far enough, I'll see you on the leaderboard.
We are down to the final workout. We have sweat together, persevered together, and triumphed together. This May, we cheer together as the fittest among us advance to the second stage of the CrossFit Games season, the regionals. The top men, women, and teams in the world take center stage with a trip to the CrossFit Games on the line. Nothing is guaranteed. Every trip must be earned. Three weekends, eight regional events, just five spots up for grabs. Only the top 40 men, women, and teams will compete at the ultimate proving grounds in Carson, California. Be there to see the best at the 2016 Reebok CrossFit Games Regionals. Tickets on sale March 28th. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the cool down show presented to you by Arosti. This is our last cool down show of the season, so we want to give a big shout out to Arosti. Their affiliate program is going fantastically. If you are an affiliate, you haven't signed up yet, go to arosti.com slash affiliates and you can check it out and get yourself signed up. Um, ben Smith, I'm going to talk to you first. This is the first time we got to see you compete. We missed you at the Invitational. It looks like you're back to form, but tell me what happened. Uh, yeah, I had some problems with my back. Uh, it was either muscular or something uh, tendon related. I'm not really sure, but um, had got a lot of work done. Rossi helped me out a lot, and uh, just couldn't recover in time for the invitation. I was really, really looking forward to it, and I just couldn't make it happen. So, back to kind of getting better now. Uh, feeling better. Happy it was a light workout today. <laughs> well, looking pretty good. And tell me, we talked uh, on the, in the interlude there, and you said there was a little bit of a mistake in your head. You just miscounted, or what happened? I, I don't know why I dropped the bar. Um, on the 18, I did 15, dropped it, and then had to pick it back up. Just can't count, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you guys hot out of the gates. Rich, I know you're the master of pacing. Did you have a pace in your head when you heard the workout announced? No, not at all, really. It's just uh, kind of go. I knew Matt was really good at this workout. I believe he killed us even worse, or just not about the same last time we did this workout. So I uh, was going to try to keep up with him, but there, he was just he was fast, really good. Uh, when did it set in? When did you, when did you uh, settle into that pace? Uh, I mean, you just try to keep going as fast as you can the whole time. I don't know if there was any real pace the entire time. It was just go. All right, so you're basically iconic in this sport, but you've never competed in Aromas before. I mean, tell me about how special that was. Yeah, it's awesome being here. This is only the second time I've ever actually been here. Um, so it's, you know, yesterday we got to come out here, shoot guns, ride mo motorcycles. So that was cool. But being out here and competing in front of all these people, um, the atmosphere is awesome. You know, you have the, the whole setting. You've got the hill up there. You get to see people run and fall down the hill before the event was, uh, was a great time. <laughs> Uh, Matt, yeah, so you guys were partaking in not only the, the cycling and the, or the motorcycles and the shooting, but also you guys were putting in a lot of work in the last couple of days compared to the average CrossFitter. You guys all play it cool, and you say that these workouts are just like any other, but if you're being honest, when you come out on this floor, is it categorically different from what you're doing inside when you're lifting with these guys? Um, I mean, before, like 30 minutes before, you get that warning, and uh, my, my stomach get, kind of get the butterflies, kind of get anxious, but then just remind yourself, like, no, don't. Don't get too hyped up. It's just just another day. Like there's nothing nothing's different. Just a few more people watching, and uh, just do what you know you're capable of. Outstanding, Dave. Last workout announced for the 16 uh, 2016 Open. Talk to me about the the grand scheme. I think it's some of the best program that we've seen so far, personally. I think this is a this is a good year. It's uh, there's still there's still a lot to learn. There's still a lot to uh, make better with the programming and, and advance it. I think we, we had a good test. And as you can see, now that all five weeks are out, you're able to understand why things were where they were and when they happened. And now you can, now all the critics or all the people on the internet can analyze the programming fairly. Before, before you have all five, don't even bother analyzing it or criticizing it. You need to see the whole picture. Now, now analyze it. Now critique it. Now come after that, ca after it, but not before then. So now, uh, I hate to hammer it too much, but I want to hear from you on what it's like to be here with these guys. You know, they kind of represent the future and where the game has gone since it came here. So, how special is it to have this thing in Aromas? Yeah, it's amazing. The last time we had a, a large event here was in 2009. And uh, we were planning on having the 2010 games here. We actually made t-shirts, that uh, seminar t-shirts that said CrossFit Games 2010. But the county came in and kicked us out. So we've, ever since then, we've been in uh, Carson, 
and Carson's been a good venue for us. But, you know, coming back here, it's, it's special. This is where I grew up. You know, I used to roam those hills. I used to ride in the hills. I used to shoot, you know, not even the CrossFit part of it is, is uh, that's one aspect that's special to me, but just growing up here, spending time in that house with my family, that's where I grew up. And then also add in how much of a part of my life this was with CrossFit. You know, there's so many different directions and so many emotions to feel with, with being back here. And then you add in some of these guys are my best friends now and having them here, doing this with them, with the crew, with everyone involved. You know, it's a, it's a I, I don't think I'll really feel it until after this, until, until I'm done and then I leave it, leave here. And then that when, that's when I'll really realize how special it is being here. Absolutely. Uh, I understand we have some social media coming in. We're going to go to Instagram for a question now. Curtis Abra says, what were you all thinking in your head when you were doing the workout? I'll start with you. What were you thinking in your head? This hurts. Are you guys lucid? When I, I got I to gotta ask this. Are you guys lucid or are you just zombieing it through like I do? Uh, a little mix of both. I mean, I think you, on a workout like this, there's not really any thinking. You're just going. Um, it's just kind of get, get work done, grunt work. And uh, I don't need your glasses. Thank you. Damn, man. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, just just working, I think. Ben, you thinking yeah. clearly when you're in a workout? Clearly not, but um, <laughs> you know, I normally am. I kind of I think things through. Um, this one was just go, but um, yeah, trying to keep count, I guess. Or how about evolution? Like I noticed, you know, you do the wide stance when you're jumping. Uh, Matt looked like he yeah. had a little quarter turn. Neither of you guys were doing that. Like, do you evolve what you're doing throughout the course of the workout? Uh, no, I try to keep everything the same from start to finish. I think my first set of thrusters. I was going a little bit faster trying to catch up, but um, besides that, just everything the same, kind of, I know I'm capable of finishing the workout, and so just go and it will be over soon. Just grit your teeth and go? All right, we got another one from Instagram, let's check it out. <clears throat> Joseph Fitt says, is this when the CrossFit game is going to be available on PS4 and Xbox, because I want to play as the champ, <laughs> Rich Froning and Matthew Fraze. Yeah, I thought about that. I don't think it'd be a very fun game because it'd just be like beep, 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 Like, how would you play? You know what I mean? Squat, 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 squat. I guess I guess Dave could talk to that. I don't know. The do the motion of the kipping pull up on the you have to motion to move the moat. That's right. Am I gonna do a butterfly and it's like this, or am I gonna do a kipping pull up and it's like this on the thumb? Analyze your movement. Yeah. You have to maintain your stamina. We'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. There'll be a video game eventually. No, no definitive answer on that, Joseph Fit. Okay. As a, as a repeat champion of the CrossFit Games, do you think that that can be done again in the men's field? Uh, I don't see why not. Um, I mean, I hate to keep bringing this up for you, Matt, but I mean, he's gotten second twice. I mean, that's a, a pretty incredible feat if you really think about it. You know, nobody likes to lose, nobody likes to be second, but it's still an incredible feat and, and speaks a lot to what, what a great athlete he is. And uh, I mean, like Ben, Ben, you've been there eight years, this will be eighth year. And I mean, this would be eight, yeah. eight. So you've always finished, besides the first year we talked about when you're 150 pounds, you've always finished, you know, in the top. So um, I guess it's just, yeah, I don't see why it's not 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 possible for somebody to do that. Uh, ben, your thoughts? Because you are the defending champion. I know this came up last night as well. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it in an interview yesterday. I mean, it's kind of one of those things that you know everything has to line up really well. You got to be healthy. You got to have a really good training year. You got to go out and have a have a great week. You know, it's not just one. It's not just me going out there and doing it. You have to have your support system around you. You know, things got to go well. So it's not an easy thing to do. Um, yeah, I mean, Matt Matt's done well the last two years, and you know, it'll be a good year this year again. I look forward to competing with him. What are your thoughts, Dave? On on dominant athletes in the future of the CrossFit Games. Does it change too much from year to year? Is there new talent coming in all the time? I have strong thoughts on that. I think uh, we'll never see someone as dominant as Rich Froning again. We will see people who are better CrossFitters, but there's never, because what's happening now, Rich was uh, leaps and bounds ahead of all the competitors for a number of years. Now these competitors are all coming up, increase, uh, approaching his level, and there's hordes of them that are at that place. So to do what he did, probably, I don't think will ever happen again, to win so many games in, uh, in four years, second, and then four years of victories, and then actually a sixth year of uh, winning the team championship, that will never happen again. But there are going to be guys who have bigger numbers, who do faster benchmarks, because everyone is it's evolving. Any final thoughts on the Open or for these gentlemen before we close out? This is going to suck. Uh, you're not backing out, are you? 
I'm not backing out. I actually, I'm gunning to beat you in Boss. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. I, uh, I don't, I don't back down. You know that. And I'm very competitive. And uh, I will fucking go to war to win. Okay? I am going to do everything it takes to beat you in Boss. Oh, I love to hear that. I love to hear that. Rumor has it that you had Rogue make a 95-pound bar, and you're just going to use that for your burpees. Well, I'm going to scale. I'm scaling, of course. I'll, I'm scaling. Oh, now we hear it. Now we hear it. Yeah, All I right. might use small change plates on my bar for the burpees. Oh. Matt, how bad do you want to win the CrossFit Games this year? Uh, obviously, it's everything. Uh, I mean, this, this is my first year of, of being a full-time CrossFitter. I uh, graduated school back in December, so now priority number one and only is to get fitter so that's day in day out that's what i do now ben how about you it started here man like it's got to be really special to be here now you're the defending champion what is it going to mean to you if you can back that up um i mean it's going to be fun it's going to be fun this year um you know just like everybody else i'm a, I'm a competitor i want to go out there and i want to win uh it's going to be it's going to be tough of course like we did like we talked about before uh but i'm up for the challenge yeah it's going to be good I know the question has been asked a million times, so we'll not ask you if you're coming back to individual competition, but how does being in an event like this compare to winning a team championship, for example, competing as an individual versus competing as a team? Yeah, no, I mean, I had a great time competing as an individual. Um, wouldn't trade any of that for the world. Um, I'm really enjoying where I'm at right now, like I've said a few times, that um, being on a team, being able to share that with other people, train, suffer with other people, and then uh, be able to share the win, it's, it's uh, pretty incredible. So it's, it's fun, a lot more fun. Outstanding. Well, thanks to all these athletes, guys. Let's hear it one more time. Dave Castro, Matt Fraser, Ben Smith, and Rich Froning. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Progenics, and thanks, of course, to Arasti for supporting the Cool Down Show all year. Thanks to you guys. You're absolutely amazing. It's been a fantastic year. Have a fantastic 16.5, and we'll see you guys at regionals. Good night.